Walter, can you tell what's going on here? Yeah. Um, these logs were all placed here <clears throat> by a, a big uh, dozer. So uh, they're really hard for us to move just without heavy machinery. Of course, there's a variety of things we could invest in. Um, but that's as far as it needs to get. It's too big to go on the mill anyway. So I have to uh, at least half it with the chainsaw before it goes over to the bandsaw mill. So that's as far as we got it, and that's where I will cut it. And the sound of gravel that you're hearing is Stella doing gravel on the road because, well, it's... Oh, road, the road crew. She wants to ride her bike, and there are puddles on it. She's taking matters into her own hands. Looking good, honey. I found this part of the process pretty stressful. Nick was working really fast, the weather was not the best, and the work was just plain hard. We started milling when winter was still upon us. We had a little bit of a late winter um, and kind of a late start on milling. So uh, I had to start by shoveling snow away from the mill uh, where I had had it set up from last season and uh, shoveling snow off of all of the logs in order to get them rolled out and onto the bandsaw mill. Mostly what we were working with this time around were three really enormous trees. We had cut them down uh, last fall, drug them through the property and onto that spot uh, in order to make way for concrete work to happen on the shop foundation. And there they sat uh, all winter long until I could get to them. Um, they were big. Those sizes were too big to fit directly onto my uh, early model Hudson sawmill. It can do about a 16 inch cut, uh, but it cannot do 24 and 28. So I had to break out the Alaskan chainsaw mill. And uh, in most cases, I uh, just about cut those big logs uh, in half and then moved those halves onto the bandsaw mill to work them down further. The chainsaw mill uh, really can kind of do anything. I have uh, a setup for my 36 inch bar on the chainsaw and that's a big cut. It can get down into the middle of a uh, of a large diameter log like that. So uh, I'm glad that I had that. Uh, it was not always part of the plan with the bandsaw mill being around but it really saved my bacon this time around. So right there I have three. So if I get two out of that and two out of that, and I know I can get at least one each out of each of those, I'm golden. So I don't need to squeeze. This is the first time I really have watched the whole milling process. Milling's loud and a little dangerous, and the first time that he did it, we had very small children. So I stayed pretty clear of the whole process when he was milling the frame for the house. It isn't my favorite. I'm glad it's over for the moment, um, but I am also really grateful that we're able to use the resources here on our land 
to build the things we want and need. Were those down in the campsite? Um, no. Um, look where Sadie is. Oh, goodness, right there yeah. in Arcadia. Arcadia. Can you explain that they're edible? They are edible, but I don't like to eat them. I like to put them in a vase and make them look pretty. <laughs> and I can match the height at the other end. So I'm getting um, some string set up in order to find a level plane to run the chainsaw mill on. It sure would be nice to uh, sit around and make little tiny pieces of furniture all day long. Uh, stools and clever little benches and places to store our things. But uh, not every job is exactly like that. So uh, every once in a while, uh, a hard one like this comes along. Oh, yeah. It's a good stack of logs you got there, baby. Yeah. I mean, beams. Yeah. I, profiles. I had a stack of logs. I didn't like it. Okay. What's happening? A lot of your time goes into just handling of the logs. The actual saw time is the, uh, the most relaxing part of it, is moving that saw. Um, the most of the work is in uh, moving the log from the stack and positioning it just so on the sawmill and all of that setup that goes along with it just uh, to make sure that you do it safely and uh, get A snowy day in April is such a mix of feelings. On the one hand, it's a huge bummer to have all of our work stop and our projects are, feels like they're on such tight deadlines. To not be able to work for a whole day is excruciating. On the other hand, it's awfully nice to take a break. We work well under a deadline, uh, however arbitrary those deadlines might be. Sometimes they really mean something and sometimes it's just a date that we set in order to motivate ourselves. Uh, this time around, I set a deadline of having the milling done of large profiles um, before I traveled for work because I did a little traveling this spring. Uh, Esther made a checklist so we could color in a green box every time I got uh, one piece of lumber made and I pretty much made it. Kids, we're putting your daddy on a plane today. Oh, hi, Dad. Bye. Don't worry, I, I get to get off the plane also. Yes. Spending an entire trip on a plane, your entire life on a plane does not sound pleasant. No. And I'm glad I don't do it often anyway. Where are you going? On a plane. Texas. Oh, oh, oh it's 
second biggest island. Yeah, except for Alaska. Alaska's huge. All right, sweeties, it's time. Say goodbye. Pick up your backpack. Goodbye. Be great. Nick worked long hours for several weeks and then he went out of town. So by the time he had been working those long hours and then was out of town, I definitely was really tired. I was homesteader tired. I was just mom and wife tired. I was ready for things to get a little easier, but we haven't really made progress of that nature on our homestead ever without having to make that kind of a push. Our whole life isn't made of that, but for about a month at a time or two months at a time, a couple times a year, we push hard. And if we don't do that, the progress doesn't happen. This is uh, a lot of work. It's easy to see why people don't really uh, do this in general when they're going to, to build something. It sure is nice to roll up to the store and get everything you need uh, put on your truck or even better yet, have it delivered right to the job site. Um, but that takes a bunch of money and, uh, and making that money takes a lot of effort. So I'm just uh, taking a little shortcut, you might say, to the finished product. This is the stack of the large profile pieces for the shop. These are going into uh, timber frame trusses. They're all six by eights. These are all four by fours. These are my roof purlins for the shop. These two piles are all the bonus material. The one by can turn into siding for the building. The two by is going to be uh, some exterior wall framing. Um, I leave them wild. I leave live edges and just however they came off of the mill in order to get them through this process quickly. I'll dry them just like that, and then when I go to use them, I will cut a, a true edge and rip them to width on the table saw. So, we made it. So with all of that uh, lumber, uh, covered up and waiting for me, I can move on to steel work and then I will come back to working with the wood when it's time to do a little timber framing for the wood elements. I'm Nick, thanks for watching. Good night, little house. Good night, daddy. Good night, um, daddy. Good night, potato. Can I say that? Are we saying good night to a potato? <laughs>